but a little bit far-fetched and you might be thinking that this kind of authoritarian control over your money is not going to be anything that we'll see in the future. Unfortunately, this is already implemented in the world. In China, the government is already able to program what its citizens can and cannot spend their money on. Over the last few years, they've limited millions of people's ability to buy things like train tickets, passports and luxury goods. They're able to do this because of China's intense social credit system that links each person's identity and actions to their bank account, allowing the government to see and to control everything a citizen does with their money. And it seems like the West is paying attention. In nations like Sweden, South Africa and Canada, trials of programmable central bank currencies are already underway. In fact, almost half of the world's nations are at some stage of implementing this kind of programmable money, meaning no matter where in the world you live, this technology is likely only a few years away. Okay, so how does programmable money tie in with the personal carbon limit? Well, it all comes down to whether or not you've gone over your monthly usage. And if you have, there are two possible case scenarios for that. The most openly talked about penalty for a person going over their individual carbon limit is that they'd simply get charged for doing so. Just the same as what happens to large companies today. Taken too many car trips this month or bought a little bit too much meat? In that case, you'd simply get a bill at the end of each month from your government so you can pay the price of being a naughty citizen. As your entire carbon usage would be tracked by a government CBDC, there would be no way to hide how much carbon you've used. And since they now also hold the keys to your money, they won't even need to send you a bill for your excess usage. Potentially, they'll just automatically pull your fine from your bank account. 